Hey YouTube, welcome to part 3 of my front end loader build. In this episode we definitely will finish the keel. I had thought I'd finish it in the last episode, but I did want to make sure that I showed every phase of building this because it is specific to a Mitsubishi 1550 tractor and if you decide that you want to try and build one of these for yourself, I wanted you to know how the keel is constructed fully because you'll need to do it a little bit differently for any other tractor and the only thing that will be common are keel posts which have to be the same in order to match the rest of the front end loader. Anyway, let's get on with this and get it finished. Just so you know what I'm doing, I'm using a thick cutter off wheel and I'm using it on the edge to go through and smooth off this inside. But really it's the only tool I've got that's going to rip it off in any reasonable amount of time. Somehow the video of grinding the hole in the keel post didn't come out, but I've got this still here so you can see what I did. I've never actually welded a flat onto a pipe by cutting a hole through the flat and then welding it onto the pipe. So I wasn't sure how to go about it and what I chose to do was bevel the sides of the flat. Because it was so thick I thought it would be best to bevel it so that I could get into the bottom and do a good reach on it to weld it to the pipe. I'm not sure if it was the right way to go about it or not, but it seems to have worked really well. I left about a 3.30 seconds of an inch reed base in there, and the bevel was approximately 45 degrees to make sure that I could get the welding rod down to the bottom and actually do the reed base. The first part of the process of assembling these, I'm going to put the stirrups onto the keel base. I've just sat this there, we're lining it up. That's the stirrup, that's the keel post. I've got it all leveled up there with another stirrup underneath to try and make sure I get it all lined up the best I can. Make sure that this goes into the post cut out exactly. Push the stirrup up to it and while it's not all that critical, the plans do call for it to be at right angles with this back face. So I am using a square just to line it up. I think I could probably eyeball it good enough, but as soon as I got the square there, I'm going to use it. Now I'm just going to put a tack on two corners with 6013, then I'll tack the other side on, then I'll swap to 7018 to do the wells. And then the same on this side, make sure she's nice and tight, push that into it, and you just use a square on it to line that up with the back. Checking all that. The last one I put on was just a bit out. I'm going to cut those tacks and just do him again. He's for oh, maybe a tenth of a millimetre. There's not much in it, but it won't take a lot. Fix it up and get it exact, so I'm going to do that. I think that what I did wrong last time was I assumed that the ends of this were straight and I didn't push it down into the stirrups and pull this other stirrup up into that. And there was just a saw cut on the end so it didn't have to be enough to be all that straight. The stirrups don't have a lot to hold, but I'm still going to do a multi-pass weld on them with 7018. Not unexpectedly, that's pulled these top ends out. I'm going to get clean, pull them back together and then go down these sides. The good welds, the only criticism I've got is that they're not as even as I'd like, but the welds themselves are good. There's not a terrible lot of force on these stirrup locks. Because the welds pulled, I've got a quarter of a millimetre maybe of wobble in there. I don't think that's going to matter once it all gets together. I'll do the other one off camera, but that gives you the idea. Before I finish assembling the keel, I am using the partly assembled keel post to line up the towers and weld them together. Now I want to keep the video 
in the sequence of doing the heel first and then the powers. So I'm just waiting at this point that it's much easier to do the powers now than it is to try and do them after you've got heel or Natasha. It's just easier to line them up on the table. I will cover building the towers in detail in the next video. Okay, in order to make sure the new keel post lined up properly, I've mounted the keel back on the tractor. Keel posts are done on there like that. I'll get them all measured up, lined up properly, I'll tack it in position, triple check it all, and then if it's all still good, I'll give it a good tack so it won't move and pull it off and weld it up properly off the tractor. Actually, I'm going to take a risk on it. I'll put a tack in this top here to hold it once I get it all lined up because that will allow me to twist it this way after I get it off the tractor because I haven't really got any tools that would allow me to line it up front to back really well so I'm going to have to do that off the tractor when I can measure it against the far side. We'll make it work somehow anyway. Just keep viewing and you'll see how. The first thing I did to set these up was to make sure that the tractor was level horizontally at crossways. I had to trust the luck that it was level longitudinally because I didn't really have any way to measure that. I then used a piece of scrap angle iron and measured the distance out from the frame of the tractor for the correct positioning of the keel posts and lightly clamped the angle iron in position. With that done, the next thing to do was to use a spirit level and level the angle iron vertically in both directions. This is a repetitious process of leveling it in one direction, leveling it in the other, checking the first one, adjusting that, checking the second one, adjusting that, and so on and so forth. And of course, don't forget to check the distance from the frame, make sure that that hasn't moved as well. And once I had it checked a dozen different ways, it was time to clamp the keel post into position and then check it another dozen different ways, just to make sure. Because given the type of weld that's going on this, once it's on, it's staying there. There's no way that you can adjust it. Once I was satisfied that I had everything as perfect as it could be, I put a decent tack in the top centre of it. The reasoning here being that it was difficult to make sure that both sides parallel while it was on the tractor and by putting one in the top centre that would allow me to adjust the sides for parallelness for want of a better word hopefully without throwing out any of the other measurements and once the tack's on recheck it all again just to make sure that nothing moved and now that I've shown how I did that one I'll do the other one off camera. I'm putting the first pass of weld around this I think I might have mentioned before I wasn't sure that it was a good idea to bevel down into that or not on this type of weld. I guess we'll find out now how bad it really is. Do a flux or piece tack. Uh, 718 rods, first job by the way. Okay, one pass done. Now I'm going to build that really heavy pass on both sides of that, same as I have it down there, because that's where all the load's going to be transmitted into the tubes. I think my idea of bevelling needs to work pretty well. I've got nice penetration through there. I've already done this other one on the bottom, and he's got pretty good penetration through as well. Yeah, okay, I think that's the right thing to do. Hope it was anyway. I'll let that cool down, then I'll knock the flux off it and put another weld on it. I'm going to take these welds very slow, just one weld each side, let it cool in between while I do some other jobs, because I don't want to end up walking this through too much heat into it. Hopefully, if I take it really, really slow, that won't happen. I'm just doing another pass at the multi-pass weld around the tube that holds the heel post. The idea is to fill it up, end up with a bevel on it and the wells. So I'm going to do most of this off camera because it's just going to get a little bit boring to keep watching. And I'll come back and do a shot of the finished well. Alright, well there's the heel all finished and painted. I've hung it up there to paint it. 
paint's dry now so it's ready to put on and that's the next task. Well, I think it's a pretty reasonable job. Should do the trick anyway. Well, I put all this on the tractor and I packed it all in position. Then I dropped it down to the floor and pulled it out with a little bit of wriggling around. And I thought it was reasonable to assume that it would go back the same way. Well, that was wrong. Fortunately, the hydraulic jack came to the rescue and I jacked the tractor up a little bit, which allowed me to get it back under. And of course, once I had it under there, I couldn't lift both sides by myself, so I acquired some help from my wife to lift it into position. I'm going to try and fix these two top holes. They're not very far out. They just need to go back just a shade. I bought this rotary brake from China a good while ago. I haven't used it a great deal, but it's been really good for what I have used it. Normally, if this wasn't on there, you could use a rat tail file, a little bit of elbow grease, and you get the job done fairly quickly. But because of the positioning of it, you can't really use a rat tail file without risking damaging the threads inside. So I'm just going to use this rotary brooch on the outside metal and hopefully not touch the inside and stay well away from the thread. It is just a little bit awkward to get in here. So I might have to try turning the wheel a bit. Oh yeah, that's done it. Now, I just need to go and get a air gun to blow the rubbish out of there. I don't get that in the thread. And there sits Keel in all its glory, finally finished and attached to the tractor. I'll be covering the build of the arm towers in the next episode, but here's a sneak preview. I have designed it to have a quick attach feature similar to commercial units. There's a rod across the top of the tower that fits into the recess in the top of the heel post and then a pin goes through the bottom hole to lock it all in place. I think the tolerances are good. I'm very happy with the way they came out. Nothing is too tight and yet there's no movement into the door when it's fully locked in place. I hope and I fully expect that this will be as easy to attach and remove the front end loader as it is on a John Deere, Otos, New Holland's and all the rest of the commercial units. Well there you have it, we finally wrapped up the middle of the keel, it's on the track for now and ready for the front end loader. I'll be continuing the front end loader in the next video I get out. If you'd like to see more of my projects and reviews, you can go to my channel or browse to my website. Thanks for watching. Until next time.